I'm Joseph Kasser, and this is an overview of the Continuing Education short course on a systems approach to project management. And the objective of this very short video is to summarize the five-day course in 15 minutes or less. So what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to introduce it, tell you what the learning outcomes are, the assumptions behind the design of the course, give you an overview of the sessions, share some comments for participants, and show you where you can get further information. As you can see from this introduction, it's not your average course. It uses the systems approach, and it's the st my standard teaching style now, which is developed from 15 years of research into the, both the pedagogy and the needed content. If you want to sit back and listen for five days, you're in the wrong place. Go take somebody else's class. In this class, you will be taken out of your comfort zone you will have to think, which is what a project manager needs to do. The learning sessions are intense, as you will see when I go through each of them, because this class teaches principles as well as processes, but the good news is it can be customized for specific needs without changing the pedagogy. So the learning outcomes, there are five of them. Understand and be able to apply the systems approach to project management. Know the methodology of project planning, monitoring, and control. Know how the methodology is applied. Be able to plan and validate plans for technocentric systems. And be able to anticipate, plan, and manage change in system development projects. The assumptions behind the course are the course is in seminar format. There's too much knowledge to cover in the five-day contact hours. So a lot of the knowledge is in the readings. And you will be given the readings and copies of the PowerPoint slides. The lectures summarize the knowledge and point out the important points, but you as a participant are expected to read the readings. And then you will experience practical activities that bring the knowledge to life and provide the experiential anchor points because studies have shown that you can't learn something until you're ready to learn it. And it's the exercises and the mistakes that you make in the exercises which provide the learning opportunities, which in turn provide the anchor points for you to anchor the knowledge. The sessions and the schedule are shown here on slide seven. Ignore the colors, they just uh, are there to point out the diff where one session ends and another one begins. I'm gonna go through each of the sessions in detail, so I'm not going to uh, comment on them here, but I will point out that session three introduces the case study project. This is the project that you will be going through in, in the other sessions. And it, it organized this way, it provides for easy customization because we can pull this case study out and put a different one in that suits your organization. The staffing, scheduling, and costing also contain exercises, so following six. And then you can see that um, 13, 15, 18, 20, and 21 contain exercises where you actually deal with change management. So the first days of the course contain more lecturing and less doing, although they do contain a mixture, while the last days of the course contain more doing and less lecturing. That way you don't go into shock right away when you're faced with almost non-stop doing. So let's go through some of the sessions. Session sh two, management, general, and project management. It introduces problem solving because that's what managers do most of the time. They solve problems. Actually, they figure out what the problems are and then they solve them. So also it explains the nature of management, general management, project management, and the difference between general management and project management. Session three, as I said, is the introduction to the case study exercise. So it gives you the background and it gives you enough technical details to enable you to be able to create some elements of the project plan during the course. Of course, you're not gonna be able to create a complete plan, but you will be able to do an outline in the form of a PowerPoint presentation. So you start to exercise your brain in thinking about planning. Session four goes into planning in more details. It explains the element of a project plan, discusses project product-based planning as opposed to activity-based planning, the difference between a work breakdown structure, which is traditionally used as a planning tool and should not be, and a work package, 
why planning should iterate from start to finish at the conceptual level, but then from finish back to start at the detailed level, and how to demonstrate the value of prevention in your plan, which is difficult to do in the traditional uh, approach to management, because if you prevented something from happening and it didn't happen, who's to say that it was your prevention activities that prevented it? It might have not have happened on its own. And in this session, you actually start to begin to create parts of a project plan. And this is what a work package looked like. I'm not going to go to details here. I go into details in session four in the course. But you can see it has things like the reason the activity is being done, the resources needed, the traceability, decision points, assumptions, and so on. And I explain why in session four. And another tool that's used for planning is the Product Activity Milestone Chart, introduced in 1995 in my book Applying Total Quality Management to Systems Engineering. And I explain it in the session. And if, for those of you who've got some background in TQM, you can see that it's a cause and effect chart backwards. Session 5, Milestone Reviews, explains the system lifecycle the system development process, and how they map into the project life cycle and the problem solving process. They're pretty much the same. And the purpose and nature of informal and formal reviews as checkpoints and milestones along the road to successful project completion. Section 6 is a project planning exercise, so we review the PRINCE2 management methodology, and then you go on and create more of the project plan. Session 7 deals with staffing, explains the need for high performance teams and that people are not interchangeable, and you get to create a project team. You get a set of resumes and you, uh, you create the project team, and then we get to see what the different teams create and who they select for the particular tasks. And we get to see and understand why certain teams picked certain people and other teams didn't. Session 8 goes into scheduling and it explains the project network, schedules and how to create them, the critical path and it's important, and discusses the fallacy in slack time in fixed resource situations, something that isn't generally mentioned in the traditional textbooks. Session 9 is cost estimating, and here you get to read about the factors and influencing the quality and accuracy of the estimates, and you read about the methods for estimating co project costs and you actually apply those methods. And the lecture explains the different types of cost contracts and you actually get to cost the project based on the information provided. Session 10 deals with reducing project schedule and costs and you learn how to implement cost and schedule reductions, what happens when a project is cancelled, and the exercises you get to shorten a project by 25%. Session 11 goes into performance monitoring and controlling. So the lecture explains the structure of a performance monitoring system and the project control process, mentions some of the reasons for project failure and how to suggest and mitigate them, and other techniques for mitigating and preventing project failure. And one of the tools that you get to use is a crypt chart. And I go through it in the session 11, and there's a lot more detail in reading 1102. So here there's a mix. See that the lecture will give you an overview of reading 1102 and you get the details and lots of examples of the use of the crypt chart in the reading and that's there for you to work through as homework the evening before the session or to have available as a reference once you've completed the course. Session 12 deals with risks and uncertainty so it identifies where and when and how risks and uncertainty arise in the project. And this can start anywhere with formulating a policy to changing an undesirable situation, all the way through selecting the contractor and then going through and implementing whatever system or change is needed to make that policy happen. So it explains the difference between strategic and tactical risks and ways of estimating risks, and you get to perform some risk management. Session 13 is where the fun begins. 
because once you've created your plan, traditional courses stop there. Well, not in this course. Here you get to see what happens when the project diverts, diverges from the plan. And so from now on, you're going to take this each, you're going to take the project through different stages of the system development process. And the first one is PDR. And sometime between the previous milestone or your completion of the project plan and PDR, some event happened that caused a change. Typical events could be the expected resources were not available, so the project was delayed, or critical component was late, or a critical component came early. Did you use that opportunity for something? Or the system or the chief systems engineer resigned. What's the impact of that on the project? Or the company won a major contract for a new and exciting project, and some of your managerial or technical staff applied for transfer. How are you going to deal with it? Or engineering was implemented smartly, which reduced the critical path by 20%. What's the impact of that on the project? So you have to recalculate the whole project and update the Gantt charts, the PERT charts, the e earn value analysis, and the CRIP charts. And so here you get, you get to think through what's the impact of this change, and then you get to practice your planning skills again by making the changes. And I've shown you eight events here, and there are 23 available. And then, after you've done that, session 14 is where I give you a model example. I discuss the effect of changes on cost and schedule, and I give you an example of several responses. And I should go through about how to show them in Gantt charts, and cost changes in EVA format, earn value analysis, and, and how to show that in the CRIP charts. So you can show technical, the impact on the technical progress as well as the cost in the schedule. Session 15 is another change management exercise, and here we've moved on to CDR. So sometime between PDR and CDR, something else happened, and you have to recalculate it again, again more experiences. And then in session 16, we sort of step away from the project for a while because one of the critical skills for management is communications. So this session introduces how we communicate ideas and it explains the nature of written and verbal methods of communication, the importance of effective written and verbal communications, how to create the abstract and annotated outline, use a proven effective documentation preparation process, and how to cite other documents. And so you don't plagiarize, and it sort of shows that you have expertise and you've done your research. Session 17 deals with presentations, how you to prepare a presentation, analyze presentation, and present the, you know, the, the results of the analysis. And the exercise will, you will analyze your presentations and the other presentations that you've seen so far, and analyze them and present the results of the analysis. Session 18 gives you another change management exercise, so you get more experience. In session 19, I go through the human element. It introduces the human element of project management and deals with issues like conflict, managing teams, leadership, styles, authority, and influence, recognizing and rewarding individual and team achievements, negotiation, and outsourcing. Critical skills needed by the project manager that you may not get in many project management classes. And you have been using these skills in the exercises. And if I haven't mentioned it earlier, the team leader rotates through the exercises so that each of you in the teams get a chance to be the manager or the team leader. Session 20 is another change management exercise. And 21 is still another change management exercise. Now this one is a contingency session and may be skipped because it is difficult to time this course because I don't know how many teams and how long the presentations will be each time the course runs. And by the time you get to session one, you may not need another iteration through the change process because you may have learned it and be able to work through it quickly and almost without effort. 
22 deals with project audit and closure, so it explains the nature of project audit, explains the project closure procedures, and you get to analyze and evaluate a project at closeout. So you get to, so you get to analyze and evaluate your project at closeout. Session 23 summarizes the course and reminds you about the way the sessions were constructed, and I didn't mention it at the beginning, but uh, at the end of each day, we take some feedback about what you th thought about the day and what you learned. And at the uh, next morning, right away, I share that feedback with you. And you get to see what other people thought about the day. And I get to answer any questions that came up the day before and summarize the knowledge from the previous day. Some comments from previous participants. The idea of working backwards from the final product to work out entire project structure was the best thing about the first day. Really learning something today, the importance of listening. Being able to participate in the exercises helped me to understand the concept much better. Better understanding of risk and how to mitigate it. Different approach for teaching. Has improved my skills for presentation, handling pressure, etc. And now the comments turn on me. Good professor. Rigorous and precise, a good teacher who can stimulate students' creative thinking. His unique method of teaching. Professor Kasser knows how to teach. He actually cares about how to do it. This is very, very pleasant, as in universities, professors tend to be chosen by their curriculum, not by their teaching abilities. No comment. Also, he knows his subject well. He thought a lot about it. He's an expert in the domain. Plus, he doesn't blindly follow one textbook. He's very critical about it and his critical thinking in general is simply excellent. And I've got more comments in the same, um, t in the same way. So hopefully we met the objectives and I summarized the five-day course in 15 minutes or less. And if you need a customized version of, for your organization, contact us. If you need more information, contact us. If you need a semester mode version, as in the NUS Faculty of Engineering Master of Science program, contact us. If you want to request a sample study guide with more details of the contents of the sessions and the reading, contact us and we'll provide it. Thank you. Thank you for listening and viewing this presentation.